This video is going to talk about the first part in identity. We're going to be talking about the grade 11 identity right now. Let's get into it. The first identities that you have to remember is this. Which is sine squared x plus cos squared x is equals to 1. Now, this is very important in answering questions. Now, you need to understand that the x could be variants of different things. It doesn't necessarily have to always be x or theta. It could be any value. As far as you notice that there is a squared and there is a sine and a cos and an addition between them, we understand the value you will get would always be 1. There are some variant of this identity. It could also be written like this. Now, we could also be written like this. So, it is very important that you remember this first identity. Now, another identity you also need to remember is this. The division of sine theta over cos theta gives you tan theta. There's one thing that you also need to remember about this particular thing is the value that we substitute in terms of theta and theta must always be the same. What I'm trying to say is that if you have sine 10 over cos 10, that will give you sine 10. That will give you tan 10, I mean. However, if you see a question that says sine 20 over cos 10 you do not say that this is tan 20 over 10 this would be considered wrong so it's very important that the values that you have over there must always be the same and you will also replicate that value in your final answer so that's why we have sine 10 over cos 10 we should give you something like that a variation of this is cos theta over sine theta. Now, as you notice from here, the original says sine theta over cos theta. Now, since this is cos theta over sine theta, we can see that they were inverted. So it means that our answer would also be inverted. So our answer is actually one over tan theta. This is the second identity that you need to remember. Okay, so always try as much as possible to remember these two identities because they will definitely serve you well in answering questions. Now that you have an understanding of the identities you need to remember, let us try out an example so you guys can best understand how it works. So now let us try out an example over here to help you understand identities a little bit better. This is a question that asks you to prove that this whole thing is equals to one. And there are two choices in proving this. You either make the left hand side equals to the right hand side, or you make the right hand side equals to the left hand side. Now we want to prove this. And as you can see, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for you to make one into the left hand side so it will be advisable to make the left hand side into the right hand side so we're going to be working off the left hand side now an important tip in proving is whenever you're working with proofs try as much as possible to think of algebra whatever you do in an algebraic equation an algebraic sum you should try to do the same thing also in trick putting that at the back of your mind these sort of questions you notice that you have two brackets and normally with questions whereby you have two brackets, we fight. So let me give you an example. So if you have a question that says x minus 2 and x plus 3, and you want to simplify this, what we normally do is that we multiply, we multiply, we multiply, and we multiply, right? Remember the concepts of four. First, outer, inner, last. x times x, x times 3x, negative 2 times x, negative 2 times positive 3. That is exactly what should be at the back of your mind when you get a question like this. Now, the same thing would also apply to this particular question. 
we notice we have two brackets and there's a possibility of we foiling and that's what we're going to do so let me clean this off first of all so we're going to foil we are going to be careful to multiply them step by step so we don't make a mistake so we start with this first one over there so it says stand squared x times one that would just give you tan squared x then we go to the next one so that's your f then we go to all the outers which is this one over here so i'm going to write everything now so it says tan squared x times that it's going to be plus tan squared x times cos squared x over sine squared x let me put this in bracket so it doesn't confuse the stuff i'm working with then we have this one next they're so going to multiply this next you have negative sine squared x times 1, which should be negative sine squared x. And finally, you multiply this last. This here will be negative sine squared x times cos squared x over sine squared x. And I also put that in bracket so it doesn't confuse me. Now, don't forget about we have like a denominator over there that we also need to keep writing so all this is over tan squared x okay so we start with the first one we understand here that we have tan squared x we can't really do much with it for now so we just write it down that is tan squared x i noticed that this could be changed into one over tan squared x because this is cos over sine. So it's the opposite. Since sine over cos is tan, this is cos over sine, it is one over tan, right? So I'm gonna change that into one over tan. I'm doing that because I notice if I make this one over tan, I can actually cross cancel that tan squared x and tan squared x, okay? So let's do that next. I'm gonna make this plus open bracket, tan squared x times one over tan squared x. And this here is negative sine squared x. Can't really do much with that. And also looking at this one here, I also can cross cancel this. Look at this. This sine squared x can cancel that sine squared x out. So that will make only cos squared x to be left in this place here. So I'm going to have this as cos squared x. Now we also divide everything over tan squared x. Now in this line here, we would also cross cancel again. We notice now that this tan squared x can cancel tan squared x. So all I'll be left with is tan squared x plus. Now this here will just be one after they cancelled out. And one thing I also notice about this scenario over here is that this kind of looks like sine squared x plus cos squared x. The only difference is that there are negatives instead of positives that you have here. As you can see, this should be positive sine squared x, positive cos squared x. So what I can do is that I can actually bring out a negative so that I would have this, which is an identity. So I'm going to rewrite this as negative, open bracket, sine squared x plus cos squared x. And if you think about it, if I multiply this negative times sine squared x, it's going to be giving me negative sine squared x. And if I multiply this negative times cos squared x, it's going to give me negative cos squared x. Right? Now, this whole thing, again, is over tan theta, or tan squared theta, I mean. This here will now be tan squared x still, plus 1, minus 1. Because that whole thing is one. I don't forget we have a negative there. And all this is over tan squared x. So as you know, one minus one is zero. So that is out. So I'm only left with tan squared x over tan squared x, which as you know, is equals to one. So to answer this, we had to rely on our background on algebra and true meticulous steps you would get your final answer and that's it now this is one way in which you can use your grade 11 identities there are other ways it can be used in different types of questions we're going to talk about that in coming videos 
But now, next up, we're going to be talking about the grade 12 identity. We're going to be talking about one or two applications of how it is used in questions. Now, if you want to learn more about Trig, there is a playlist in the description below. Try as much as possible to check it out. And please, on your way out, do like and subscribe. Thank you.